In this video, we're going to take a look at the user interface and tools of Perfect Effects 4 free. With this interface, your image will always display in the center in the main active image area. Let's start with the Effects browser on the left. When you look at the top, you'll see three tabs, Effects, Favorites, and My Presets. Clicking on each tab will go to the respective browser. Below that is the search box. Just click in it and type in a value. So if I want to find effects that have contrast in it, I can start typing and the effects will appear. To clear the search results, just click on the X. Below that are all of the effects categories. To open a category, just click on the category name. To close it, just click on the category name again. Also, if you open a category and then click on another category name, it'll automatically close the previous category. You can choose how you view the effects using the four small icons on the lower left of the user interface. By default, we'll display effects in a single column view, but you can also select a two column, three column, and list view. Additionally, you can enlarge the thumbnails of each of the effects by dragging on the right over here. If there's a particular effect that you use a lot, you can set it as a favorite by clicking on the little flag on the lower right of each thumbnail. Now, if you go to the Favorites tab, you'll see all of the effects that you've already selected. To remove an effect, just go back to that flag and select it so that it becomes clear. To apply an effect, just click on it and it'll apply onto your image. Now let's take a look at the four tools available in the tool well on the top left of the image preview area. From the top is the masking brush, followed by the masking bug, the pan tool, and the zoom tool. The masking brush allows you to remove an effect from the active layer. So if I click on a masking brush and start drawing, I can remove the effect from anywhere that I draw. There are also several options to the masking brush that you can see in the tool options bar at the top. First, you have the mode. By default, the mode is going to be paint out, which will remove the effect. However, if you want to bring that effect back in, change the mode from paint out to paint in, and then draw the effect back in. Next, you'll have the ability to control the size and feather of your masking brush. There are several ways that you can adjust these values. First, you can just type in the value that you want. Second, you can click on the little triangle and use the slider to make the brush larger or smaller. Or, you can also hover over the unit and drag to the left or to the right. And finally, you can use your keyboard shortcuts using the brackets to enlarge or decrease the brush size. If you have a Wacom pressure sensitive tablet, you can use pressure sensitivity by clicking on the W to activate. To deselect, just click on the W again. The feather controls the distance between the inner circle and hard edge to the outer circle and soft edge. The larger the feather, the more of a transition there will be when you mask using these brushes. And then there's the opacity, which controls the overall strength of the brush. At 100%, you will automatically remove or add full effect. However, if you drop the opacity to say 50% and then change the mode to paint out, you'll only remove in that increment. Finally, the Perfect Brush gives you amazing edge detection technology. To use it, just click on the checkbox and start drawing and the brush will automatically detect edges as you draw through based on the color that the center of the brush detects. There are two buttons on the right of the tool options bar that you have when you have the masking brush or masking bug selected. The first is invert. By clicking it, we'll automatically flip the mask. If you want to start all over with your mask, just click on Reset to wipe out any traces. Now let's take a look at the masking bug. To use the masking bug, select it from the tool options bar and then click on your image. This will give you the ability to mask in a plane or a circle. Just drag the bug where you want it to go and adjust the size and the orientation using the legs, which have solid colored circles. Like the masking brush, you can control the feather or transition with the feather slider and the strength of the bug using the opacity slider. You can also change the overall shape of the bug. By default, the shape is rectangle. You can also select round if you want to do a spot mask. And like before, you can invert the mask easily or reset it. Now let's take a look at the right pane. From the top, you'll have the option of selecting the navigator, loop, and histogram. The navigator gives you an idea of where you are in your image and lets you zoom in at specific increments. 
This makes it easy to achieve 100% zoom or fit the screen in just one click. The loop allows you to see specifically where you are when you're zoomed in very tightly in your image. And the histogram gives you a representation of tone from the shadows through the midtones and onto the highlights. Below that is the effect stack. The effect stack allows you to stack effects one on top of the other. So I already applied I got the blue. If I want to build on top of that and add some more effects, I can click on the add button, which will automatically commit the effect and create a new empty effect layer. Now I can go to another effect, like this coffee effect, and apply it on top. With that done, I can control the strength of any effect using the amount slider. Bringing the amount slider to zero will essentially hide that effect. I can also slowly and gradually bring back any effect strength. If I want to hide the effect altogether, I can just click on the eye icon to hide it and then click it again to restore it. I can also control how each effect blends with the one below it by clicking on the Options button. With the Options button selected, I can hover over each of the blending modes to see a live preview of what the blending mode will look like on my image. I can control the strength of the layer over here as well by using the Amount slider. I can also choose to apply this blending mode to a specific region, whether it's the highlights, midtones, or shadows, as well as a color channel. And if I want to prevent the blending mode from affecting any of the highlights or shadows, I can use the respective sliders over here. And if I have any portraits in my image and I don't want the effect applied, I can increase the flesh color slider to prevent that from happening. If I want to remove an effect layer altogether, I just have to select the effect layer and then click on delete to remove it. Now, if I click an effect, I go to one of the categories over here and apply a secondary effect like cross-process blue. If this is a particular combination of effects that I like, I can save it as a preset by going to the preset menu item and then clicking save preset. From here, I can say very blue as my preset name. I can choose a category. So here I can call this Brian's presets. And then I can specify a creator and description. When I'm done, I'll click Create. And now if I go to the My Presets tab, there's my Brian's Presets category that I just created, and then the Effect preset that I just created as well. So now if I go to Edit and then Reset All, which will effectively bring my image back to the original place, I can apply that preset that I just created. And then if I want to customize it further, I can click on the Expand button, which will open up the preset and give me access to the original effect layers that I used to build the preset. So if I want, I can go to the cross process blue layer and drop the amount down if it's too strong. With Perfect Effects for free, you have access to some amazing effects and tools to really realize your photographic vision. Thank you very much.